What's up guys, so last night there was an event called the Mogul Chess Boxing Championship. It was thrown by another YouTuber named Ludwig. I'll put some links down in the description if you want more information. But if you didn't know, chess boxing is a real sport. You play by alternating rounds between playing chess and boxing. And you can win by either checkmate or by knockout or something called TKO, which is like a technical knockout if the referee stops the fight to protect the players, um, you can also win that way. So last night this event happened, there was a big turnout. I think there was over 300,000 people watching live while this was happening. But I'm gonna show you one of the games where the chess actually was the deciding factor. So a lot of the matches, it turned out that the, the, the fights were stopped during the boxing portion just to protect the players. And so we didn't get to see a lot of the chess games actually finish. However, this particular match between Andrea Botez and Dina Belenkaya we did get to see the full chess game, and it was actually a really interesting one featuring the London system. I thought there was quite a few moments that we can learn from, and so I'm going to go through that game and talk about some of the key moves. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we go. So Andrea was white. She played D4, and I should mention the time control for these games is 5-0 blitz. So you get five minutes for each player. There's no increment, and essentially... The first round, I believe it was two minutes, I think, for the chess part. You just play for two minutes, back and forth, back and forth. Whatever the clocks are at and whatever the position is at that moment in time, you stop. Then you go and do the boxing, and then you come right back and pick up the game where you left off uh, after the next round. So um, here we go, knight to f6, and she does go for the London system. Now, one of the things about the London is that it's uh, considered a very solid opening. And so it's a good choice when you're playing against someone who's rated higher than you, as in this case. Dina has a significant rating advantage on Andrea, and so it makes sense that she would play something like this. And I think she just generally plays the London a lot anyway, so she's more familiar with it. So uh, I was curious to see how Dina was going to approach this to try to get some attacking chances. And she starts off with the move d6. Now, d6 makes a lot of sense. You're blunting the effectiveness of the bishop. If you imagine if you play a move like d5, yes, you gain the control over the e4 square, which is nice. But the trade-off is that you allow the bishop now to have a really nice diagonal and some things you have to worry about. So she decides to go ahead and just shut down the bishop by playing d6. So we get e3 and now h6. Now, this is a very strange move. Most people here are playing g6, or knight b to d7, or knight to c6, or c6, or bishop f5. There's so many other moves. h6, very, very rarely played. And you're going to see the idea is that she wanted to play g5. And what she's doing here is expanding on the king side, but also turning this game into kind of a, a more exciting type of position, right? This is not typically what London players will want to see. And so I thought this was a very interesting way to approach the game to really create some attacking chances early on. And she's gaining some tempo on these kingside pieces, which is which is nice. So bishop g7, bishop d3, doing some developing, and knight to h5. And notice white's bishop. It has no squares. It's completely trapped. And so uh, Dina at any moment can trade that knight for that bishop, which is, you know, if you're able to open up the position, the bishop pair becomes pretty powerful. There's not going to be a bishop to oppose this bishop on g7 once it gets traded. Okay, so that's a, a nice idea. Knight b to d2, knight c6, developing, e6, e4, so uh, Andrea is taking control of the center, and then knight to f4. This is an important moment we, I think we can learn from. Notice how as soon as this pawn moves forward, Dina takes advantage of the square that opens up, right? So whenever you see a pawn move forward, you always want to ask yourself, okay, which squares was that pawn controlling and does that give me a new opportunity that, that wasn't there before right like if you go back a move this would have been a terrible idea you're just going to lose your knight for the pawn but as soon as andrea plays e4 now it's like oh okay well now there's a square on f4 that i can use and that's what what dina does she brings the knight to f4 okay um and we do get the trade and you might be saying why did she go there and, and allow the trade and get doubled pawns as opposed to just taking the bishop in the first place and here's the thing about this. Now white's rook is actually activated immediately. Black has to be careful. If you move these pieces away, you're going to lose your pawn. Uh, there might actually at some point in the future be tactics along, along this file where you have to watch out for this. And so it just gives white a more active position. If we compare that to what happened in the game, now the rook is not involved. 
And it might look kind of weird, like isolated pawn, doubled pawn, but actually black has some attacking ideas with the rook coming over to the g-file if white were to castle. And this pawn is actually kind of annoying um, and maybe can actually be used to attack. And we're going to see that in, in the future. Um, so, all right, queen to e2, bishop to d7, a4. I'm not really sure what this move was. I think she didn't know what to do probably and just decided to, to throw the pawn forward. And then we get a5 and... Queen to e7. All right, so this was the first moment in the game where they stopped the chess part and they went to the boxing round. So at this point, uh, Andrea actually has a, a winning position according to the engine. However, it's not really the type of position that a London player would, would want, right? It's very kind of chaotic. You've got this G file happening over here. There's a big question of where does White's king need to go? Do you castle this way, which looks kind of open? You've already played a4. Do you castle this way and then have to deal with that G file, like I mentioned? And so that's you're going to see that as we go forward. That was kind of some of the problems that Andrea had with, with the position. Uh, but they went into the boxing round, and it seemed like Andrea was winning the boxing portion. So she was being very aggressive, throwing lots of punches, and Dina was kind of trying to hold on. And so what you're going to see when they came back is that it seemed like Dina really turned it up a notch. Like, okay, let's try to win this game before the next round, right? And so you're going to see how she starts playing very aggressively. So queen to d2, d5. And, you know, if your opponent's king is in the center of the board, it makes sense to try to open it up. And that's exactly what's, what's happening here. And the way that you do that is by trading off some of the pawns that are in the way, right? So she plays d5, trades one here, plays f5, gaining a tempo on the bishop, and then e5, right? And she would like to take here and then get to check on the king. And uh, before the king gets castled, generate an attack, okay? So d5 and then e4. Here's a nice uh, learning opportunity. When your pieces are attacked, you don't always have to move them. And actually, sometimes the best thing to do is ignore it and create a counterattack. That's exactly what she does here. And the reason is, if white were to capture this, she's going to take a, a knight as well with check and generate a very strong attack on the king. The queen can't block because of these pawns. So you have to move your king somewhere. You probably don't want to go this way because then, you, you know, this happens. And so most likely you would move this way. But even this, after castling, look at how the rook is now lined up on the king and the queen. And if you take here, you're stepping into this, and this is not going to end well for white. Yes, you can temporarily block, but white, black's just going to be able to bring both rooks over, and this is really bad news. So you can see how uh, the counterattack move here by playing e4 instead of worrying about this threat was actually really, really powerful. Okay? And so... Uh, this was a good move, Andrea Castles, because now if black were to take this, there's this idea of taking here and then following up with this pin. And it's actually black who didn't castle in time and the rook takes advantage of it, right? So you can see how if your king gets stuck in the center at the wrong moment and your opponent's able to bring a rook over, uh, it's it could be bad news. And that goes both ways. So castling, good move. And Dina plays knight to e5, which is great. So now that the king has moved, the priority is changes from trying to open up the center to let's bring pieces over to the king side and attack over here right and you're going to see how immediately as soon as the king castles she shifts her focus right so knight to e5 and then f3 trying to get at the king right here so we get g3 uh, a lot of times this is a good idea if you're trying to keep the position closed rather than taking however in this particular position the weaknesses that are created over here are, are really it's a really big deal and it's, it's, white doesn't really have a good way to defend. So that's kind of the problem for Andrea here. So we get h5, knight b5, bishop to h6. And right after this move, I believe they went into the next round of boxing. So Andrea was getting low on time, uh, obviously is losing in the chess game here. And so she was really trying to win it in the boxing. Uh, you could say there was a bit of controversy over some of the things that happened in this round and the next round as far as the boxing is concerned, but I'm not really going to be talking about that. Um, you can watch those clips for yourself if you want. We're going to focus on the chess game. So they, they did the boxing round. Dina survived, and we are back to continue the game. All right, so queen to d1 and queen to g5. So whenever you have a, a permanent weakness around your opponent's king, which we have right here, you want to ask yourself, what's the best way to take advantage of that. And if you just kind of quickly think about that, what, what would the best way? Well, if you had a queen that landed there, maybe from h3, from g4, that would be very, very good, right? And it turns out it's, it's actually very difficult to stop. And so she starts doing that right away. So queen to g5. 
knight takes c7 and notice how i'm sure that dina saw this but she didn't care because losing this rook in the corner means nothing if you can get your queen over here and deliver checkmate on g2 right and so um doesn't worry about that plays king here and king h1 so andrea sees what's happening and she's trying to figure out a way to stop that which this actually does good a good job of that because if the queen comes over like this uh, you can always play rook to g1 and defend it however there is another threat which we're going to see in just a second which is going to happen so queen to g4 she pushes this pawn queen to h3 and yes there's this threat and so she deals with that well she throws in the check first and then she deals with that with rook to g1 but there's also this threat knight coming here and queen uh sorry queen coming here defended by the knight checkmate on h2 and this is the big problem for white this is why white's position is so bad there's just not a good way to stop both of these threats right and so at this point um andrea knew that the game was about to be over and so i think yes she captured this pawn temporarily delaying she's trying to hold on for the next round of boxing so she sacrifices the knight to delay this move however there's a problem that Dina missed. So Dina captured this. Now, keep in mind, this is a blitz game. They're playing fast. They've just been boxing for a couple of rounds, and so everybody's tired. And so she misses a move here. If you'd like to pause, what's the best move for black in this position? Well, if you said knight takes f2, you are correct. This is just mate in one. And uh, it's it makes sense why it was missed, because the major threat in the position, you know, is kind of like here, or at least the most obvious one, I think, is here. And so knight takes f3 does deal with that, and this just renews it for next move, and so it makes sense that you might miss this. But she could have won the game immediately and not had to go into the final round of boxing, which led to all the controversy and whatever. Um, but it makes sense. She missed that, and so the game went on. And I think I don't even know if this was the move played or if the, the, the round ended right here and they went to do boxing, but it was somewhere right around here. Went for the final round of boxing. Anyway, Dina did survive, uh, barely but survived to come back to the game and simply move the king away. And after this uh, sacrifice, Andrea resigned because there's no way to stop checkmate over here. Uh, literally, it's mate next move. So uh, interesting game. And I think the takeaway that we can learn from this is when you're playing against the London, sometimes it makes sense to do some different things, um, even if they're maybe not the best like h6 is probably not the best move but notice how it led to this really weird position that ultimately gave dina really good attacking chances right and so if you're playing against an opening like the london you know keep that in the back of your mind thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time as always stay sharp play smart take care